In part one, we discussed treating sleep by improving sleep habits and the sleep environment. In this video, we'll talk about two other ways to improve sleep, by taking medications and by treating sleep disorders. For the first, I'll outline recommendations of Dr. Charles Lapp, the well-known CFS and FM physician and director of the Hunter Hopkins Center in Charlotte. Dr. Lapp and I teamed up to create the website titled Treating Chronic Fatigue Syndrome and Fibromyalgia. You can read his full recommendations on sleep medications there on the page titled Medications for Sleep. That's down at this one down here, treatcfsfm.org. Uh, the other address that you see there, seifitselfhelp.org, is our uh, self-help program website. Dr. Lapp suggests that if you think medications might help improve your sleep, first that you first consider over-the-counter, that is, non-prescription products like melatonin, valerian, and tryptophan, or uh, simple antihistamines such as Benadryl, Tylenol PM and Advil PM, so that within the category of medications uh, over the counter. If none of these work, you can try prescription medications down there. Because no one drug is consistently helpful for treating sleep in people with CFS and fibro, a reasonable approach is to find a physician willing to work with you to find what helps in your individual situation. Since people with CFS and fibro are extremely sensitive to medications, your doctor should start with low doses and increase slowly to find a dose that is both effective and tolerated, that is, minimizes side effects. In patients who have tr trouble both falling asleep and staying asleep, Dr. Lapp finds that a particularly useful combination is clonopin to initiate sleep, together with trazodone or a tricyclic antidepressant antidepressant, excuse me, to help maintain sleep. Examples of the latter include doxepin, amitriptyline, and nortriptyline. Amitriptyline has been the most widely and successfully used. The next step would be a non-hypnotic medication such as Lunesta or Sonata. These work to naturally stimulate the sleep center of the brain and are not thought to be addicting. Sonata has the benefit of being short-acting that is lasts only typically three or four hours so it can be taken for uh, early awakening. Lunesta has been approved for long-term use. The hypnotic drug Ambien is useful for both sleep initiation and sleep maintenance. Ambien increases the depth of sleep but users may adapt to the drug over time and some people experience amnesia or sleepwalking. Finally a warning while medications can improve sleep, they can also make it worse. Some sleep medications that are effective when used occasionally can produce poor sleep if used frequently. Also, some drugs produce side effects, like a feeling of grogginess in the morning. Medications taken for other problems may interfere with sleep if they cont contain substances like caffeine. Second category of uh, sleep treatments we're going to deal with here is uh, sleep disorders. They're very common in people with CFS and fibro. They affect a majority of people with the two conditions, and Dr. Lapp believes perhaps as many as 80% of people with CFS and fibro. Treating them can have a dramatic effect on symptoms. So if your sleep doesn't improve dis despite better sleep hygiene and the use of medications, Consider asking your doctor for a referral to a sleep specialist who can examine you for sleep disorders. Here's a quick overview of the two most common, uh, sleep apnea and restless leg syndrome. First, sleep apnea. Apnea means absence of breathing, and it occurs when a person's airway becomes blocked during sleep, and he, he or she stops breathing. An episode can last a few seconds or even longer. The person then awakens, gasps for air, and falls asleep again, often without being aware of the problem. The cycle can occur many times a night, leaving the person exhausted in the morning. As you might guess, sleep apnea deepens the fatigue and brain fog experienced by people with CFS and fibro. Apnea is a treatable condition. A common remedy is the use of the CPAP machine, CPAP, as I indicated there. 
Those letters stand for continuous positive airway pressure. The equipment includes a mask through which a compressor, compressor delivers a continuous stream of air, which keeps the airway open, thus allowing uninterrupted sleep. Use of a CPAP machine can eliminate 90 to 100 percent of a person's sleep apnea. Other treatments are also used for apnea. If you're excessively tired in the morning or have trouble staying awake during the day, you might check with your doctor about the possibility of apnea. Second, restless leg syndrome, or RLS. This involves twitchy limbs, strong unpleasant sensations in the leg muscles that create an urge to move. The problem is often at its worst at night. Self-management techniques that may help include reducing consumption of caffeine and other stimulants, establishing a regular sleep pattern, doing exercise that involves the legs, distracting yourself by immersing yourself in activity, using hot or cold baths or showers, and taking supplements to counteract deficiencies in iron, folate, and magnesium. Several categories of medications may also help, including sedatives, drugs affecting dopamine, pain relievers, and anticonvulsants. Two of the more commonly used drugs for RLS are Requip and Mirapex. So there you have some ideas for better sleep focused on uh, sleep medications and sleep disorders, and in the earlier video, uh, ideas about changing sleep habits and sleep environment.